So if you're anywhere on the internet recently, you might have heard about the Game Awards. Everybody and say that I think I want to nominate this award to uh, my reformed orthodox rabbi Bill Clinton. Thank you, everybody. If you did hear about the Game Awards, you know about that kid. His name is Matan Even, and he's a bit of a prankster on the internet. A lot of wrong things have been spread about Matan, and so I'm here making a video about it. So, who the heck is the Bill Clinton kid, Matan Even? Well, in case you didn't know, Matan is a bit of a social activist and young person. He's 15 years old, but he's got something he cares about quite a lot, Hong Kong. Now, it's really great to see a young person care about Hong Kong so much, but what's going on here? How do you get to the Game Awards? Well, you see, when Matan was younger, he went to an NBA game and he held up a jersey, but secretly, he had a shirt that said Free Hong Kong on the back of it. Because at the time, the NBA was complicit in the uh, subjugation of Hong Kong citizens, and also, they still are. Anyway, something that's important to mention about Matan is that he's actually Jewish. Not like pretending to be Jewish, he's like actually Jewish. And uh, he just went up there to, to say something, anything, really, just, just to do it. He literally just walked up there like he owned the place. It's pretty funny uh, seeing the clips looking back now. Now, people say that uh, what Matan said is a bit anti-Semitic, uh, which is usually hard for people who are also Jewish, but I'm certain I, I got plenty of commenters who would say otherwise. Uh, however, Matan has repeatedly said uh, that he's not an anti-Semite and that he doesn't agree with the, uh, the, the opinions of newly found uh, anti-Semite Kanye Ye West. Regardless, this doesn't matter. You see, because of the things that Matan set up there, people have been speculating about him, and so far from what I've seen and looked into it, uh, the kid's not that. Now, there is a point against this, is that he went on Infowars, and aside from the guilt by association argument made there, it was very strictly about the Hong Kong protest and what he did that faithful day at that NBA game. Now, obviously, the Infowars interviewer is not interviewing in good faith. You know, the Infowars people have their own grift to sell, and that's exactly what's happening in this clip. The internet's much smaller than you'd imagine, right? There's like three separations of people between me and Matan, right? That's that's really how easy it would be for me to get in contact with him, as I have plenty of mutuals who do know him do knowing him through a body. For example, he was in PyroCynical's server, and basically he had been going around telling different people he knew on the internet that he was going to go to the Game Awards and do this thing. I was playing Warzone with him four days ago, and he told me his plan. I told him there was zero chance it happens. And I was like, what? And then I was sent text screenshots from the kid that was up there. But again, from all of his online activity, uh, the thing he cares about most is Hong Kong. And that seems to be the only thing that he really has a very strong political opinion on. Granted, he's 15. So I'd imagine over the time between being 15 and for say even my age at 24, that your political opinions are gonna change a lot. Mine have, I hope that you guys have grown and changed your opinions on things too. It's kind of natural and normal, and if you never change your opinions, maybe reevaluate some things. But as a result of all of this, Matan has been going on a bit of a media tour since his uh, illustrious moment of being arrested and placed in a gamer prison by Jeff Keighley. So for example, Jason Schreier was able to confirm that he's Jewish by asking him a question in Hebrew. Now, I have plenty of opinions on Jason Schreier, but you know, it's nice to just show that, oh, somebody who is a very highly accredited games journalist, for whatever that's worth, um, it's not worth much, but what I'm saying is, is that we have somebody proving that he is Jewish. However, this hasn't stopped some people. Now, listen, Matan could be anything, but the kid's 15, and I don't want to ruin some kid's entire life because of something stupid he did. Is this one stupid? Yeah. But also, it's like really funny, so I... <laughs> but there was an article. Uh, that has triggered this video happening. And I'm not going to name the writer of the article, but it is from a publication that is mocked furiously on the internet, that being Polygon. Now, in this Polygon article that interviews Bataan, uh, they talk about the shoes he was wearing that day. He's wearing a pair of Yeezys. Now, those of you younger millennials or Zoomers out there might even go into an office, and sometimes you have to wear formal attire in the office. One of the great things that has changed with modern day business is the fact that now, 
Now I can wear sneakers to the office. So I wear a nice pair of sneakers, maybe a pair of Jordans, maybe even a pair of Yeezys because the shoes are like $300. They're not cheap shoes. These things are a sign of status, but also do kind of fall into a weird formal streetwear kind of thing that's gotten very popular. I mean, you see it all the time at the Game Awards with people wearing suit jackets, but then having like a, you know, a t-shirt on. So it's completely normal. Now, he bought the Yeezy specifically for the event, you know, to have a nice pair of sneakers for the event. He even said in the interview that he does not agree with Kanye West politics. Yeah, but then why'd you buy the shoes? Now, I, I should mention that Kanye has been separated from the Yeezy brand. Right, that's like a whole big thing that's happened to Kanye, right? So the shoes are still going to be made just without the cooperation of Kanye West. But, uh, you know, as a result of that, now by the shoes he's wearing, people assume that when this boy got up there to cook, that what he was dropping was some Mein Kampf style stuff and that, that wasn't what was happening. But here we go, having an article from a millennial games journalist who I assume probably wears sneakers to the office too. Uh, put, putting like this weird like implied insinuation that the kid is up to no good. I shared more of the article, but again, I don't want to give Polygon any residual clout. But one of the things that happens in this interview is that the interviewer is given a runaround. Now, it's completely unrelated to anything. It has nothing to do with any of this. Uh, but then the interviewer tries to like catch Matan in like a I gotcha moment by talking about his politics. And so far, the only thing that he has a really strong opinion on is that Bill Clinton should be in charge of everything. And I mean, how could he not be? Really, what Matan did was completely just something silly and a little ridiculous and not all that serious. I mean, there were a lot worse things he could have gotten up there and said, but you know, I don't want to be thinking about it like that. I, I just think what happened is funny and I think most people would agree with that. Uh, which is why it's very annoying that when I see the replies of this journalist who did this interview, uh, this person is talking about how, like, oh, the kids these days, I don't get it. This was such a, such an exhausting thing. I don't understand the kids these days. Listen, I get it. You're a childless millennial living in a too expensive city. I get it. You're very serious and you want to make a change on the world. Unfortunately, you have decided to work at Polygon, so the most change you're going to get is some quote retweets on Twitter of people calling you a moron. However, I'm giving you the courtesy of not naming you by a name. Really, what sealed it for me was this final closing paragraph from the article writer. I don't think it's a bad thing to want attention, to want to be heard and loved and admired. I wanted that at age 15, and I'll admit I still still want it now, but the difference is that I actually give a shit about saying something that matters, or at least something clever, and this wasn't that. Really it didn't matter what Matan said, okay? It was going to be remembered because he just walked up and spoke into the mic. <laughs> and you know, that's kind of a disservice to a young person who has repeatedly talked about something that was willfully ignored by plenty of people in mainstream news. and plenty of politicians and for him to be passionate about that was something he was passionate about but what can he do if you followed the stuff that's happened in hong kong you know that that ship has sailed and that has been a democratic loss for a many a person and yeah it is a really rough thing it's one thing that i'm particularly upset about but we look the other way for china on many occasion um so you know he's had things to say and said it before and it's just something he does they go on to state it was just a huge waste of time and also a statement that could lead to continued discrimination against Matan even himself which by the way they are contributing to in how they've covered this I can only hope that someday even looks back at this moment and feels as embarrassed for himself as I felt on our phone call today. Not only for wasting his time in the spotlight, but also for the incredibly cringeworthy levels of self-owning he displayed. Not just on stage, but in what appears to be a full day of phone calls with journalists baffled by an uncreative prank. As if something should be as eloquent and, and well thought out as a Borat skit. The <laughs> He's 15. Like, the the weird, like, insinuation of, like, insulting him here is so inappropriate. You are an adult. Like, live a little. I, I really do uh, find a lot of this article funny because you can really see Matan giving this person 
who is a working professional the runaround and it is very funny uh but i, I won't share the article with you um other than just to say that i enjoyed uh laughing at this person's expense and um you know hopefully matan's entire life isn't ruined because of the conspiracy theories that uh dog whistle hunters are looking for on twitter obviously if something comes out of him being like an awful person I'd, I'd say otherwise, but until that time, I, I have nothing else to say. I just wanted to get this out there because it was very disappointing. Um, I, I've noticed very continually that journalism on the internet has gotten absolutely terrible, and I don't think I'm amazing. Oh, whatever, whatever, stupid article, stupid writer, whatever, goodbye.